Okay, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, NES 101 video amplifier circuit board. Uh, I'm nearing the end of my run of 100 boards I had made. And just like anything, if you do something 100 times, you, you see things and find things you wish you would have done differently. So, I had this one made. This is a. Um, I have it made with uh, the Dorkbot Group out of Portland, Oregon. Very cool guy runs it. Um, I had a. I mean, I'm still a beginner, so I had a lot of questions about everything, and he always answered, and he was always right, and it's it's been a very excellent experience. So, you know, I plan to stick with him, and he has a a prototype uh, service and you get three of the same board for five dollars per square inch of one board in free shipping. So like this little board right here which you can see it's not quite an inch by just about five eighths by three quarter ish and I get three of those for I don't even remember it was like two or three dollars it was almost nothing it was excellent so, you know, a long time ago I had you know, I had a prototype made of this one and uh, found that it worked, everything was good, so I had a, a hundred of them made and the uh, it's called the medium run order and that is a dollar a square inch, but you have to have a minimum of 150 square inches worth of boards and it can be a mix of anything. I could order, you know, three of these, but, it, you know, that's only, you know, that's only, uh, I guess it would be, oh, and it has to be in multiples of 10, that's what it was, I could have 10 of these, which would be less than 10 square inches, so I'd have to come up with 140 square inches more, 140 plus more of something else, so my, my one and only medium run order, I had, I had a bunch of, uh, Atari boards made also, uh, actually I should say Butari, the AV mod that I do on the Ataris. This is a. Uh, I had a. Uh, can't remember. I think a hundred of these. How did that go? Maybe it was two hundred of these. I'd have to count them again. It doesn't really matter. I had a bunch of those made, and a bunch of these uh, Nintendo games made. And I haven't even really started to do anything with the Ataris yet. But, you know, I continue to do a lot of top loader stuff. So, I don't remember when I put that order in. It's probably been less than a year ago, but I've went through 100 boards in less than a year. And there was a few things that I really wanted to change. Uh, the one thing I did forget to translate to the, to the new version was the, uh, I had rounded corners, and this has sharp corners. Uh, it really does not matter. In the end, it doesn't matter. But you know, I stuck with the uh, the mountable screw hole and the uh, exposed copper for grounding. That has worked out beautifully. Uh, you can see that in the uh, the walkthroughs for the AV mods and stuff like that on the YouTube videos. But some of the problems I've been having when making, this is the old board, when I make these, it's kind of hard to tell, but there is almost no annular ring on the uh, the two resistors and the two capacitors. So on the new board, actually, in, I, I had to go in there and modify uh, the footprint for, for the... Uh, I don't remember what size the resistor is, but this is just an eighth watt size, but where the actual resistor and capacitor goes through, on the old board there just there wasn't much uh, gold there on the annular ring, so it was a little bit harder to solder. I had to wet it and I had to let 
the solder wet itself uh, through those vias. So I wanted it to make them larger, that way when I put the soldering iron down on it, it was also heating, heating that via as well as the component leg. And that way when I fed solder to it, I, you know, I felt a little more confident about that connection. So that was one thing I changed. Uh, another lesser important thing I changed was on the old boards I had actually tried to uh, identify the boards uh, using uh, a very small text size and uh, width or a uh, ratio. I think this is like an 8% ratio. Might have been like an 0.03 or 4 size. And, I'm, and it's supposed to be better uh, resolution on the solder mask. So that, you know the gold would show through for the text. Well, as you can see, you can't hurt. I mean, there's an almost invisible. Some of them come out well, and, and most of them look like this, where there's almost no text visible. You have to really look at it. So I switched to just using a silk screen. Another thing, another great thing about this service: uh, dual-sided solder mask, dual-sided silk screen, gold plating. And the purple color. So I switched to the silk screen on the bottom edge. You can you can plainly see the text. It's excellent. But the biggest thing that I wanted to change was these four holes where the uh, the ribbon cable connected to the board. Uh, on the old board, I believe these. Uh, through hole pads were no more than vias and they were kind of an octagon shape uh, they had plenty of an annular ring to solder to and that was okay but I had to spread them out further than the ribbon cable this is a 0 .05 spaced I believe it's 28 gauge yes 28 gauge stranded ribbon cable. I buy it in bulk from Mauser for fairly cheap. I like it. It's it's easy to use. But I would have to spread out, you know, I would I would always tend the leads and I would have to spread them out to get them to fit into those four holes because they were you, you couldn't put them any closer together or they would short. So I actually had to go in and make these oblong vias I believe they are uh, 0.3 diameter and I wanted like a 0.27 diameter hole but for whatever reason Eagle would not translate that it would look okay in the library editor but once you actually put it uh, onto the layout the holes would shrink and I had done some uh, I'd done a, a, a smaller board than this for a TG16 region mod let me pause it and get that okay there's the board that I made for the TG16 region mod and all the way around the outside are are the uh, original ribbon cable connectors that I tried to have fabricated and I believe these were uh, 0.25 diameter maybe and I tried to get like a 0.2 I don't know two or three diameter hole and it just didn't work there's plenty of solder mask in between uh, the annular rings but the actual holes themselves, I don't know that you could fit uh, 40 gauge wire in there. It is, it's a really, really tiny hole. It just it filled in somehow. So it's, I mean, these boards are basically useless unless I want to just kind of try to surface mount the ribbon cable. I don't really want to do that. You know, I'd like to be able to, to 
tin the leads and stick them in the hole and solder them down, which I did do. This is a finished one of the new board. And that's exactly what I did with this ribbon cable right here. I tinned the leads, which is what you see here. And then I actually come back and I I cut off the very tips of it because it never fails. Whenever I tend the leads, I always get a little ball or a blob on the very end. So I just cut that off and then I can, can usually just shove it right down in them holes. I think this one was tinned even worse, really, but yeah. Goes right down in there, I can bend them over and solder them down, and good to go. So, that's really just a little lesson on, uh, or a lessons learned about circuit board design and manufacture.